Hello again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher. Welcome back. And uh, this is episode number 33A of my What Makes It Work series. And this will be a two-part video. There will be a part B, a 33B, available uh, in about a week after this is published. But this is all about this bandsaw speed reducing device. I've been wanting one of these for many years and you might remember that I made a whole series of videos on reducing the speed on a bandsaw, reducing a, the speed of a woodworking bandsaw so that you could cut metal. So that's what this is. I found this at Arnfest and this video will be an audience participation video so you can help me calculate the reduction of this. So you engineers out there or wannabe engineers, I'm going to give you the information you need to calculate this and maybe you'll enjoy doing that and then watch the follow-up video too. And there may even be a third video where I attempt to uh, mount this on one of my bandsaws and I turn it into a, a metal working. I don't know if it's conceivable or not but I may do that. So let's take a little closer look at this. Okay, this is what it looks like when the guard is on, and it's a nice metal guard. The name of the company is right here under blue. I didn't want you to see that because you'll cheat and look it up. Not plastic, metal, steel. And inside you'll see that we have a device that has two shafts and two sets of pulleys and belts, and they're cog type pulleys. And the whole idea here is this is mounted on a drill press or a bandsaw and your motor will be mounted, your belt from your motor will be mounted on this shiv if you want direct drive. However, if you want the direction you would quickly shift the belt onto the other shiv here and there is a great reduction. And that's what you're going to help me calculate. Now I know what it is because I've even got the catalog where this is listed and I'll show that in another video also. Now please do not cheat and look at other people's answers. They may be wrong anyway. And come back and look at the video several times and see what other information people have provided. In part two I think I will take this apart so you can see more readily how it actually works. I'm not going to talk today on how it works, although maybe that is obvious to you. I do not think many of these were made because they were rather expensive and this is from the 50s and or 60s. They probably made it for about 10 years as an accessory and the general principles here is simply that let this represent the electric motor shaft turning the reduction device and this belt here would go up to the bandsaw main shaft and if you wanted a direct drive for woodworking it would turn the belt on this pulley. If you wanted to reduce it you would move the belt over to the other pulley and it would greatly reduce it. Now I'm going to turn this with my electric drill here momentarily and then I think I'll hook it up also to a 1725 RPM motor which would have been the most common motor used by various companies for power tools. Okay I put orange stickers on these two pulleys so you can see that they are not running the same speed and this little Delrin reducer that I made is on the DeWalt drill I'll run it at slow speed first. Now don't cheat and try to count those. Then your answer will be incorrect and you will fail the test. And from this side, rather intricate device with about four bearings, two shafts, four pulleys and two belts and I think the belts and pulleys were made by Browning because I see a BR on it but I'm just deducing that from experience and a die cast housing here very nicely made just something interesting enough to where you want to put it in your lap 
while you're watching a ball game and fondle it and play with it and see how intricate it is. Now let me put the electric motor on it which probably won't be much different than this although it'll be the correct speed and then I am going to talk about the diameters of the pulleys and all of that so that you will need those in your calculations to figure out the ratio because we're talking ratios here aren't we this is a little sidebar if you know what that is when you have step pulleys such as on this little drill press you can change speeds but you do not have a great range that is you can't go all the way from 10 rpm to 100 rpm it's just limited because of the diameter of the pulley so if you want a great reduction you either need a planetary gearbox or other gears but typically to keep the price down it will be a device with two shafts like this okay here it is coupled up to a Dayton motor 1725 1750 whatever and you can readily see here and this is the way it would be set up on a bandsaw coming right out of the motor that this pulley is running at the speed of the motor 1725 and this one is greatly reduced but just how much is it reduced so let me give you some dimensions here I will be putting all of this information at the end of the video if you want to partic participate in this. But let me tell you first of all that this large pulley is the same diameter and the same number of cogs or teeth as this one. Similarly, this small pulley is identical to this small pulley. So there's no big secret on that. But the small pulley is 1.30 inches in diameter and the large pulley is 3.7 inches in diameter. And maybe you don't even need that information. The large pulley has 48 teeth in the cog. The small pulley has 15 teeth. Now with that information and your brain and your freshman science or physics or whatever you had or math you should be able to figure out the ratio that is is this a 1 to 3 or a 1 to 5 or a 1 to 20 or just what is the rate relationship in speed or number of turns between these two pulleys I hope I have stated that correctly so put an answer in the comment. I hope I get a lot. Keep coming back and looking at that for more information. And then watch for part B in a week or so after this is published where I give you the answer, talk about it some more, and then hopefully I take it apart so that you can see how the shafts and the bearings work, although I don't know if that's necessary. I don't want to ruin the thing. I love this. And then finally, if... It works out in my experimentation. I will attempt to mount this on my Delta 14 inch bandsaw if there is room and if the shaft size is correct and all of that. I don't want to go to too much effort for a video that people aren't very interested in. So thank you for watching this one and be sure and watch the next one. It will be very exciting, you know. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now. Again, there are the diameters of the pulleys and the tooth count on the cog pulleys.